some time back you were recommending May 15th was the optimum planting date. Then lady has came back to an earlier date. Is all this cultivar related? Uh, what are you finding? It's definitely cultivar related. George Green was great when it was released in the mid-90s, but it needed help as far as spotted wilt was concerned. And what we found out through our research was that we had to plant it later. We had to maybe put it in twin rows, had to get a higher population to help reduce the risk of spotted wilt virus in Georgia Green, even though it had better resistance than what we were planting prior to that, like Flowrunner GK7. What we're finding now is these cultivars that we have available Right now, Georgia 6G, Georgia 7W, Georgia Greener, Florida 7, Tifcarp, those five that we'll be planting this year all have considerably better resistance to spotted wilt virus. And in our trials, we found that we can go back and start planting some in April, which helps these growers spread out their harvest. Mm -hmm. Which is what some southwestern growers in, in Georgia have been doing for a long time, planting early like that. Well, a lot of them do like to plant early. And where we've been called is particularly those growers that don't have irrigation. In the past when they were planting Georgia Green, they may have thought, well, I got moisture now and it's the 25th of April, but I have to wait to April, May 15th to plant. And what they find out is they've lost their moisture. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh shoot, I should have planted earlier and I would have got a stand. Instead, I waited because of spotted wilt virus. But now we don't have to worry. We can plant any of these five, go ahead and plant them and we'll be perfectly fine because of that better spotted wilt resistance. The way time's moving on, it'll be planting time before you know it. So that's probably on a lot of growers' minds now. When should I put them in the ground? Well, you're exactly right. I mean, we're in the middle of February, and we're talking about uh, middle of April, two months, 60 days. In 60-plus days, we'll be seeing peanut seed put in the ground, which is kind of a scary thought with as cold as it is outside. But it comes fast. Spring will hit us hard and fast. And if it warms up good and quick, then I think that we'll be in good shape. Quickly on the single row, 36-inch row, twin rows, what are you finding is the best? Well, we still think that the, the twin row pattern overall, multiple years, multiple trials, works the best. And these new cultivars are still responding positively like we saw all the older varieties. We've been, uh, Dr. Tubbs and I have been looking at 30-inch uh, rows, 30-inch singles, because we do have some growers that are set plant corn in that way. And we have found that 30-inch rows can work. The trick is getting them dug properly. So 30-inch uh, rows, singles, uh, the biggest trick there is the fact that you end up with 2,900 extra linear feet per acre, which at six feet per foot a row is going to run your pounds per acre planted up. So if you're planting 36 inch singles, you need to back your seeding rate from six seed per foot to five seed per foot. Well, you've been working on that seeding rate for years too, haven't you, John? We keep tinkering it, and you know, new cultivars come out and they, they grow differently and they have bet different yield potential, and so you start looking. And that's, for example, these new cultivars that are larger seeded. We've gone back, Dr. Tubbs and I, and tested them on seeding rate, and on those, we're saying on the single row pattern, we can back down to five seed per foot of row and save the growers a little bit of cost without sacrificing yield. So you, you get one answer, and then later on, you figure, oh, we better go back to the drawing board. <laughs> Plus, Mother Nature figures in there, too. Oh, it? Mother Nature always throws curveballs at you, so that's just. My job is pretty secure because as long as these breeders keep uh, developing these new cultivars, we, we've got to evaluate them on how they respond to conventional versus reduced tillage, twin versus single row, different planting dates, different plant populations. How do they respond to irrigated versus non-irrigated, calcium requirement, on and on.